another piece of merch that Logan bought when <laughs> they were in. I actually yeah. have all three of them currently. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. Anyway, um, hello, global fans of global things, and to that I also say bonjour, et bienvenue à the cup. The currently on a podcast where we put the real and the tea in reality, and you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy. Say something gay. Gay. Um, I am drinking some coffee currently because it is a morning recording, and I am drinking it out of my RuPaul Las Vegas mug. Ooh. Ooh. Because I just got back from Vegas. Uh, I'm pissed because I'm not there this weekend to see... <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race Live, uh, because this is the debut weekend for Mirage, and I would have loved to see Mirage. Uh, but the lineup there was very, very good. Um, I got to see a queen that we will talk about tomorrow on the pod, so I'm very excited about it. Um, but I got the fan, I got the mug, and I also did get the good luck and don't fuck it up hat. Ooh. So we are, we are decked out in some RuPaul merch to talk about how much I hated RuPaul's judging this episode. Yay! But if I was drinking out of another mug, I don't have it with me. David is the only one that has a cup yeah. mug currently. Jess, David. And you, <laughs> ooh, I don't like the way this hat looks backwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can get uh, your cup merch at lonagecreations.se.com. That link is in the description below. And we ship globally. So there are no excuses, period. We're looking at you, Mexico, Brazil, Philippines, France, Belgium, Italy. Uh... Well, we can let Belgium off the hook for this episode. It's fine. Sure. Yeah, Belgium, Belgium, you're fine. Belgium, you're fine. Belgium, you're fine. You've Belgium, if you enough. want to, we appreciate you, but you're good for now. Don't worry. Yeah, you're good for now. <laughs> we are so sorry. Well, I'm David Healy, and I don't have a cute intro, but I do have a cute shirt. Um, I decided I'm going to wear different countries, queens, shirt each episode so i am now representing for germany slash austria um with pandora Knox, one of my favorite winners from last year um, so i love this shirt i got to meet pandora so did logan um and she was great um but i am actually not drinking anything i was drinking a monster i finished it so hopefully i have lots of energy this episode we'll see yeah, God knows you needed it yesterday. Anyway, yeah, sure did. <laughs> anyway, hola, I am Eduardo, the Mexican representative of this podcast. I'm here to talk shit, get hit. Today I'm not, I'm talking a lot of shit because I am so pissed off at this episode. It was wild. I am so frustrated. Anyways, I am drinking coffee because it's 10 a.m. And I woke up like that an hour part. ago. That part, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Slay the world. Slay, Slay the globe? No. <laughs> no. No. But we are here to talk about Global All-Stars. Uh, it is episode three. Shocker to no one at all whatsoever. Uh, we have some, some favoritism already. Yay. <sighs> God yeah. damn it. I, th I think that this show had an idea of how things should go. And I think certain franchises are getting more priority than others based on popularity of those franchises. So yep. uh, I'm a little nervous now after this episode. I, re I won't get into it too much yet, but I was especially shocked about one thing in the judging, but there's a couple things that were very wrong. Uh, We'll, we'll definitely get into it. <laughs> Once we get to judging, we're going to... There's not a lot I have to say about it. It's wild. Yeah. Well, we're going to dive into this episode. But before we do, make sure to subscribe if you've not already, because we're here almost all the time giving you almost all things drag on a global level. Um, and we got a lot more uh, international drag race coming out very, very soon. Uh, UK and Espana are on the horizon. How fun. Lovely. And... Uh, I'm excited. I am excited for one of those franchises. I'm excited for both. I'm excited for hot Spanish men. <laughs> so, 
Yes. Um, and make sure to check the description below where you can find all of our audio podcast links, our other YouTube channels, and our Patreon for exclusive content and early access, including early access to the Look Over Here episodes from the franchises we are currently covering. So we come back in after the second of the talent show extravaganzas. Vanity has just won her first challenge. The girls are feeling good. The girls are feeling lovely. And Tessa Tessa is already getting her to Lulu at it. <laughs> Yay! That's my sister! Yeah! They would not get off of Vanity's neck right away. They yeah, couldn't probably. let her have her, her moment to be happy. Nope. No, everyone nope. was ganging up on Vanity this episode about the lip sync. Which, to be frank, it wasn't bad. People are saying that it was really bad. I don't think it was bad, but anyways, whatever. It's better than the lip sync we got this episode. Oh, fully. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it was not amazing. I don't think any of the lip syncs so far have been where I want them to be. Um, so I kind of get it, but like, it's just we're, we're doing global all-stars. Like, you should bring it. Like, really, really bring it. So... Uh, I don't know. It would have been fun to see other people lip sync that were excited to try it out, but uh, it is what it is. Just casually trying out lip syncing, no big just deal. Just trying. No. Gala would have killed it for how long? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's Gala would have killed it. She was Tessa the biggest one. Killed it. She, I, you know what? I I want Gala to be adopted by uh, Eva Blunt. So she could be Gala blunt because she is so blunt this episode with so many people. Like she just says it how it is and I'm kind of living for it. I don't know if it's like something that's like lost in translation and she's sounding harsher or if it's just her. I kind of think it's just her. I think it's just her because we Gala's... kind of got that energy from her on mm -hmm. her season of Mexico. Yeah, True. she's just a shady bitch and she just loves talking shit. Yeah. So like. She will say what's yeah. on her mind, and she's not afraid mm -hmm. to like sound like a like a bad person, kind of. So yeah. And Vanity, she doesn't take the opportunity to <laughs> kind of shade Eva <laughs> by saying, "Well, you know what? I wasn't the worst in the lip sync, so you all can say what you want." And <laughs> poor Eva catching strays. Yeah. I'm like, don't do this to Eva. My girl, my sister. Don't talk about Eva. Mm -hmm. My girl, my sister, my Twitter follower, Eva. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, for yeah. you, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What a crazy yeah, week whatever. it's been since the last episode. Right. <laughs> yeah. Kind of going viral for uh, being a little crybaby on the last podcast. Correct. Uh, yeah. Yes. Good Hello, times. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. But we come into the workroom the next day. They're still doing their things. And uh, I do love that RuPaul was like, you know what? I'm going to go in on theme today. Oh, so she cool. comes in. The name's Paul. RuPaul. I'm like, that's <laughs> really cute. Yeah. I can tell that RuPaul is enjoying herself in Columbia. <laughs> so, um, but we find out that the Maxi Challenge is a ball. Yeah. Much to Soa's chagrin she's yeah, like so it's not a ball mm -hmm. the maxi challenge is a ball <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so... i understand it because she did not do well in her ball <laughs> yeah and i had forgotten about that so i was like oh why are you when they oh, showed yeah. the look i was like oh, oh i yeah. forgot she was yeah. not good mm -hmm. um but it is, it is the international queen of mystery ball I think that's a cute concept. I am not mad at the concept. Um, well, and we find I, out that they have to make a look in the workroom. Yeah, I saw the name of the episode before like watching it. So I'm like, are we doing Austin Powers? Because <laughs> that's what I thought of immediately. To an extent, yes. Yeah, I mean, of. Austin Powers is a parody of, of James Bond. So it, it makes oh. sense. But the like international queen of mystery, that's like so austin powers coded uh yeah. so i was like okay let's go for this and then i saw what it is and i'm like okay this is still fun but not as fun as it could have been well some girls kind of gave uh austin powers true 
And they were some of my favorite looks, like the really campy ones too. So yeah, we'll get into those. Some of the campy ones were great. But yeah, this theme was wild to me. Like going for a full on James Bond theme was not something I would expect out of a ball. So I was really interested to see what some girls were going to bring up when it came to like the look that they were making. Could you imagine if the UK representation went home on a ball about James <laughs> Bond? <laughs> oh, is that why they saved Kitty? <laughs> Spoilers for our opinions. <laughs> Spoilers, she should have gone home. Or at least lip synced. And she would have gone home. Right? At least been in the bottom three. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we find out they have to make their third look. All the girls are running over. And this is where we get, and I do love that we got this conversation throughout, kind of throughout the workroom segment about, you know, some of the girls still not being seamstresses and still not being able to know how to sew. Mm -hmm. And the disparity that some of the girls come into this competition with where uh what was the what was the line from vanity it was like just open wallet yeah she said it's not talent it's open wallet which is yeah. my favorite quote from the episode yeah and i also think that's just a good critique on the mm. ball yeah. overall like if you're a more popular queen and have more money you're more likely to go well in this type of challenge i think at least in the first two looks, but I also understand that in the third look, it kind of carries more weight. But you know what? It's mm -hmm. and it's kind of it's kind of complicated for me because, like, I get that as a critique for for how certain people do in these episodes, but it is an all star season, so you do expect people to really put in the money to bring some really fire looks, and I think they were given some sort of budget to help with that. The problem is a lot of the Queens in this cast are so fresh off of their seasons. So yeah. it's hard. Like they, they haven't the built difficulty. up. Yeah. While you've got Alyssa who's been in the game so much, like who's second which to is, her second is maybe is Soa or Pythia for who's been like on drag drag race. Uh, drag race. The I longest? think it's Soa. Is it? I think I actually, think it's I think, Soa. Yeah, I think be. it's actually Pythia because uh, she's she's approaching three years since she was on. So I just passed two years. So, but that's that's nuts compared to Alyssa, who was first on Drag Race in 2013. 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's another reason why. And I do love Alyssa. I'm happy Alyssa's here. I wish it was somebody else. I wish mm -hmm. it does not feel even. I'm just going to say that now. It does not feel even. And from the tea we've heard online, Alyssa made sure people knew that no one was on her level. So. Everything is, uh, what is Alleged it? information. Alleged, yes. <laughs> Alleged information. Um, but I just wish, I wish it had been a girl from a newer season that hadn't been on All Stars yet. Case in point, Denali. Yeah, the Nolly would have been a good one to have. Utica. Utica would have also. Joey J. Been. I don't know. No, no, probably not Joey. <laughs> the first gay contestant. Um, the first gay, the first homosexual contestant ever, Joey J. But even someone like I'm thinking, even someone like Bosco, or someone like Deja Sky from like a newer season, or even go like I don't fucking know, Gigi Good. Like, I feel like someone from a newer season who has, who's only, like, had a few years of drag experience, a, a la what the other girls have, or experience after Drag Race is what I meant. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that just would have made for a more even playing field. They still would have probably had more of an advantage because of the amount of resources that they could have had, and I get that. But it just would have felt a little bit more balanced... But they needed someone to bring in the U.S. audience, and it wasn't going to be any of those girls. It right. had to be Alyssa. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I mean, that, that goes to the point. Like, if you think about it, like, all of the queens that are here, maybe except, I don't, I, I won't even say except. You, you read into it as you will. But all of them represent people that are considered, like, oh, this is the best that our franchise has. Um you, I know exactly who you were about and, to say. No, and that's no shade against the other queen because I loved her. Like she, 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 you know. 
But I feel like you can't just not do that for America, even though like we've had a ton of all-stars and we've had a ton of chances for, for people yeah. to be out there more often. So it would have felt weird if we brought like somebody from the C squad for America while everybody else has their A squad. And no offense to anybody that you just mentioned, like they're not C squad in talent. It's just maybe they are they haven't reached that Mount Rushmore. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm happy Alyssa's there. I think she doesn't have much of an advantage when it comes to raw talent. It's yeah. just money. Like it, sure. it really is. Just and money. I think and I I will also say on that note that I do appreciate Alyssa acknowledging like yeah, I'm not making all of my looks anymore. Like I don't have I'm not doing that. But because I'm not doing that, I need to sell the looks on the runway. That is my challenge in this is not the actual garments but it's selling it and bringing the story to life and i definitely understand that and i think that is something for everybody to do but i at least appreciate that she's acknowledging that she does have that advantage specifically in this case and i i appreciate i appreciate hearing that from Alyssa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think being self-aware that you have an advantage makes it feel less, like it makes me less angry about it, the fact that you do have an yep. advantage. Because if you're going if you're gonna have an advantage, it's I appreciate that you're at least like, yeah, I do have it, but I'm gonna make the best of it and I'm gonna I'm gonna work it and I'm gonna do my best to just kill it every single time. So like I like there's not much Alyssa can do. She has that advantage. And like yeah. David said, she is one of the best of the best and it wouldn't make sense to bring anyone else. So like, I appreciate that she at least has that self-awareness of like, yes, I do have this advantage, but I have to sell it anyways. And if I don't sell it, I'm going to be in the bottom anyway. So like, I have to still do something. It's not like I just have to sit there and not do anything. Case in point, we, oh, I don't, both of you have watched the global finale, or not the can the Canada finale, right? No, no. I know what happened. Anything. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going yeah. to say anything. I'm not going to say that point that okay. I was about to make. <laughs> Plus, some of our viewers may not have watched it yet. So, uh, true. Um, but yeah, so they're making their stuff. I do love that Pathea is the one going around being like, "I'm going to help everybody," but mm -hmm. I haven't even cut my fabric. <laughs> I freaking love Pathea. I love her and I really much. I really hope everybody is starting to like get her because I feel like she had a pretty tiny edit compared to a lot of the queens in the first couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. So she's really starting to break out into her own in, in this episode. And she just showed like why why she's one of the best for Canada and why she's here. And honestly, there's not many other people I would have picked. In fact, if I'm trying to pick a one-time Canadian queen, I don't think there's any buddy i would have picked over pathia there are two other people i could have picked instead not over but instead mm -hmm. hmm. it would be jada shada hudson understandable or yeah. honestly fierce delicious well she's not a one-time queen anymore so. yeah. <laughs> well i know but at the time she would at the time she would have been and even honestly i also again not over but instead scarlet bobo Oh, I think Scarlet Bobo, Bobo shined here. I think Bobo Bobo's absolutely Bobo. could have demolished this competition. Yeah, but, but I'm thrilled it's Pythia. Yeah, thrilled, I mean, it, I, and I love Pythia. So yeah. Pythia, I think, is the best choice to have. I think she is a really well-rounded queen, and she brings a lot of like fun with her. And I think yeah. she just we saw it this episode. She just brings it to the wrong way every single time, and so. I don't think I would have picked anyone else over Pythia. I think Pythia would have been my first pick. So, mm -hmm. Well, I want to talk about um, a couple of my highlights from the workroom before Rue, before Rue comes in and does her conversations. But uh, the first one was when we had Kitty uh, talking about her looks with Gala. And she's like, yeah, I want to, I want to pull off sexy for this. And then Gala's like, wait, uh, you do sexy. <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's like, I think of you as cute, but not sexy. And Kitty's like, what? I'm sexy. And God is so real for that, because <laughs> honestly, I agree. I've yeah. never really seen Kitty and thought, oh, she's doing sexy tonight. Maybe like once at most. 
But like whenever I think of her, I think of like, oh, she does cutesy. She does cute looks. Mm -hmm. She looks adorable instead of oh, she looks hot. She looks sexy because also she's fucking say, that. I will say Kitty now does sexy. Oh, Kitty I don't now know if y'all have seen sexy. her as of very recent, but she does it now. Yeah, yeah, she now does it, but like at this time, she didn't really do sexy. And also, she was talking to Gala. Gala is like the sexiest queen right. in the entire like cast. Yeah, she's gonna be the one dictating who's sexy, who's not. <laughs> and and I I don't want it to make it sound like it's even about Kitty's like being a little bit bigger than a lot of the queens on this cast oh, no, that's because not. it's oh, yeah, really no. not her size. It's more like she's she's more of a camp queen, and she yeah, she just her. doesn't present sexy with yeah. with her style. Like she easily could have. Mm -hmm. We never saw it in her season. Yeah, and we haven't seen it this season so far. <laughs> yeah, no, her aesthetic is just more, as I said, cutesy and it's campy, and so it's nothing about like the way that her body looks. It's more just her aesthetic. Her aesthetic right. doesn't really seem sexy to me, because we've seen several times a bigger girl can do sexy. We've literally saw it in Mexico. We saw several of the makeovers that were bigger girls do sexy, and so. It is possible, and it's not her size. It's just her aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that comes up, we we see Athena and Soa talking, and they're talking about Soa's struggle in the past. And the whole time they were talking, I don't know if this occurred to you all, but I'm like, you all are speaking in English, and both of you speak French as your first language. Right, right. And this no, is I so forced. Like, they're making you say oh, this in English. Absolutely, they are. And I wish they would let them speak in their native tongue if they're talking to somebody else who can understand that. Like, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. There's like, there's three or four girls that speak French on this cast. Yeah. Because Athena, so uh, Pythia is from Montreal. Yeah. And they yeah. brought Pythia over and that was like, she speaks French too. And, and then, like, they, all three could be. Is there someone else that does? I don't, um, I think Tessa does as well. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, she mentioned. Yeah, she mentioned it in her Meet the Queen. She was like, when she went through all the languages that she can speak. I'm pretty sure French was one of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, can we have a Francophone alliance? That'd be great. Not anymore, because be. one of them. R.I.P. I know. Um. Oh, and so should we get into Rue? Because I really yeah. enjoyed the segment with Rue talking with the different queens. There were so many good moments. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, I really, I think the highlight was just seeing like the different drawings that people have made because I've talked about it in other podcasts and I'm like, it just seems like everybody always has like a really good drawing, whatever they're going to make. Yeah. Do they have a person nope. there sketching it for Except them? For one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this episode was so weird with like, cause you had Pythia who comes out with this like incredible drawing and Rue's like wow like that's ambitious what you're gonna do and it looks great mm -hmm. and then you have Miranda <laughs> Miranda having Miranda gay and an arrow pointing to her and her sketchbook was <laughs> amazing to me it was so camp I loved it and Rue's like I, I already knew you were an amazing queen but you're an amazing artist too <laughs> I think the there's a connection me. Like there's a connection between Miranda and Rue, even Oh, it's obvious, yeah. Oh, even yeah. if I don't think that Miranda's getting her due so far this season. No. I do not. think that Rue really loves her. Like I feel yeah. like I feel like Miranda might be one of her favorites, even if she's not showing that in the yeah. judging. If that makes any sense. No, yeah. It absolutely. does. No. I mean, episode one, she got a nickname. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I was going to say. There's bring only up. two girls on this cast so far with a nickname. And they're my two favorites. So, that's absolutely oh, Tessie T. Tessie T. Tessie T. Tessie T. Hello. <laughs> that's my girl. Speaking um, of Tessie T. Mm, messy of T. Messy T. Messy T. Because she comes in. It's her, Vanity, and Alyssa. And Alyssa's talking about bringing the presents. And Tessa goes, well, is the challenge presents or the dress? <laughs> Artist I... objective, doll face. <laughs> you better go worry about that testicle. 
I really <sighs> love I love their banter. Oh my and God. I love that. Alyssa could easily be a queen that would be like, How dare you? Know your place. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And she and I was worried, like looking at the preview, I was worried that Alyssa would kind of put Tessa in her place. And we do see her talk to her about it later on, but it really does feel like she's taking it in stride. And I and I'm really happy that Alyssa, like maybe behind the scenes, she's a monster. But what we're seeing on the show, she feels like she's accepting the respect from all the queens. Yeah. But trying to be on the same level as much as as she can, um, even though she really, like we said, she does have a lot in her favor going into this competition. It really gives big sister, little sister energy. Like mm-hmm. it really yeah, does it really in does. like the absolute best way. Because we even heard Alyssa in the first couple episodes being like, testicle. <laughs> and then by the end of episode two, she's Testicles. like, I like the girl. I really do. I like the girl. I don't know about the um, <laughs> Come on, Tessa, testicle Edwards. And she didn't even yeah. draw anything. She wrote her name on the oh, paper. Yeah. She signed oh, the paper. I, my favorite part of this episode is that Alyssa just wrote her name. <laughs> she's like i'm a visual person i just have to baby we know you don't know how to make a gown yeah we know you don't know how to make a dress we've seen it and actually in this episode she did pretty damn good we'll talk she about did. it yeah. but she, she did, did pretty damn good, she she did did pretty pretty good. good so, um but yeah that was my oh god i love the tessa and Alyssa dynamic yeah, um, i wish we got to see more of the dynamics with other queens too Make the episodes 90 minutes paramount, you dumb so cunt. Sh- it's so oh short. God. It's so short. And the runways for a ball were like 10 seconds. I hated it. Fully 10 seconds it. at most. I hated it. I hated it. It's a top. No. Yeah. I. So uh, this is behind the curtain. I watched the episode very shortly before we started recording. And I knew how long the episode was like. So I'll I'll be like, oh, I have time. I can start this an hour before recording. I didn't realize that I have to keep pausing because I didn't mm-hmm. have time to take notes about every look. And I was like, okay, pause. Let me write down because they were out there for five seconds. Especially there's one look from Nelania. And I'm like, you, it we showed her like coming it. out. And then immediately it showed her walking back. To, and I'm mm-hmm. like, we didn't even see her walk this look in the front of the stage. Like, what yeah. is going on with this edit? And why is it so rushed? And why is this the shortest episode of any franchise? Like, the the episodes this season are shorter than any franchise's episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, they're all at least an hour. We can't handle an hour? <laughs> um, Apparently not. I'm annoyed about it because it's just like, you would think that they would want to make these episodes hour long or at like 90 minutes long. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. If the, if the U S all stars episodes can be 90 minutes and include so much fluff that we stop caring about the fluff. Like why? Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should we just go to the runway? Because I'm just sure. Yeah. I mean, the only the only other thing, it's very brief. The only thing uh-huh. is, like, we see later on uh, Alyssa kind of coming for uh, Tessa's look before she made it, like, while she was making it and just reading it. She was getting her revenge. She let it burn. Is this what the fashion degree? <laughs> I need the receipts. I need the receipts. No. Is, this, is this broken hem what the fashion degree designed? <laughs> oh, Lord. She went happen. in on her. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she went hard. And the thing is, both Tessa and Alyssa are queens that can dish it, but can also take it. Oh, Mm -hmm. fully. That's the big thing. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I think the dynamic works really well. It really does work. Yeah. uh, Runway. I forgot Matt Rogers was there. I was going to say, why the fuck is Matt Rogers here? They had someone cancel last minute. They had to bring in Matt Rogers. I mean, so is he on the same level for America as the first two guest judges? Well, not a pop. <laughs> is Matt Rogers on the same level as Adriana Lima and Donna Paula? I guess no. so. <laughs> no. No, but he is one of us, so I can't disrespect him too True. much. Because yeah, he but is he's a what, cutie. A my biggest thing is like Matt Rogers could be here, 
but for another challenge. I feel like for a ball, it doesn't make sense for him to be here. Someone had to have dropped out last minute. Like, there is legitimately no reason. He said he had a lot of free time on his hands. Well, in the next episode, we get fucking Ross Matthews. I would personally (laughs) rather have Ross on this episode. Yeah. Than Matt Rogers. Because at least Ross has a little bit of experience judging. Yeah. And then we have the hilarious Ross Matthews for a girl. Oh, Lord. Jesus. Oh, anyway. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, no. Um, Rue looks great. Oh, yeah. She looks incredible. Rue looks she great. Is. Yeah. Michelle looks lovely. I love the flowers. Jamal's hot. When is he not? Matt also does look really hot, I will say. Yeah, Matt is an objectively attractive man. Mm-hmm. Correct. I like his shoes. Oh, yeah, the shoes are cute. The shoes. The, the shoes. shoes. Speaking of Philippines, the shoes. The shoes. Um, that's all, I guess. We did yeah. anything else to say. Cool. Let's talk about our ball challenge. Um, we have our three looks, boss lady in charge, shevil villain, and international queen of mystery. As always, we're going to do our full thoughts and everything like that and look over here, but we're going to give some brief thoughts on the overall ball packages from all of our queens here in this here episode. So, first up, starting with probably the best, uh, Pathea. Look at the material, girl. Look at the material. What else can I say, truly? Yeah, she she did great. Um, I think all of her looks were fully realized characters, so that's what I really liked about her package. This is why I'm happy that Pythia is back on Drag Race. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, just... She understood the assignment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She understood the assignment. She turned in the assignment on time. To use Lana's analogy, she turned in the assignment on time with extra credit and did all the things. So, cool. work. Work. Even the queen, speaking again about the Philippines. Speaking of the Philippines. Um, I, I think I wanted more. That's my overall critique of all looks. I just wanted more from every single look. Yeah, I'm with you. She, she did well. Mm-hmm. Um, you could tell she's she's really going for monochromatic <laughs> this episode. I think the problem is she just set the, the bar so high with her looks from the first two episodes. So these, like, in comparison, it's a little disappointing, but they're still very good looks. Yeah. Yeah. It For me, Eva was a very good safe. Yeah. A very mm-hmm. good safe. Queen Kong. I liked the, the second look quite a bit. For last week's runway category. This, <laughs> I like the sleeves of it. I don't know, girl. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I'm a little mixed on these. Like, each look, there's something different that I would have done. Um, But I don't think any of them are bad, personally. Mm -hmm. Um, I just just wanted to see more elevation from her than we're getting. I genuinely don't think she packed anything for the first two runway categories. I gotta be honest. Confusion. But I will say the hair on the third look is made by a friend of the pod, Ivory Glaze. So shout out to Miss Ivory Glaze. It is a great way. We'll get to it, but she gorgeous way. At least one of them from the premiere too, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think very possible for hair for shout out Ivory. Mm-hmm. Love Ivory. Love Ivory. Love Ivory. Love Ivory. Not sarcastically. We do love Ivory. No, fully, fully love Ivory. Like for Athena Leakies. Actually pretty good. This was I I actually really like this. I actually really like this. 
Yeah, I'm with you. Based on all three looks, for me, there's no world where she should have been high, but no world where she should have been in the bottom three. Like, this is the epitome of a good, safe package. Yeah. And I really have issues with the critique she got. Oh, we will get to it, but I was also really upset with the critique she got. Oh, I actually think her third look really does feminize her body. We will get to it. Um, all I will say is her first look is maybe my favorite look of the night. So I'm pissed. Her first look? Her first look. Oh, interesting. It's on my favorite of the three. Yeah, not not for me either. Interesting. Maybe we each have a different favorite. Maybe. <gasps> probably not. I'm sure we have the same favorite. Probably, <laughs> probably. Is it the second look? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's yeah. really good. It's really good. Well, yes. Oh. Miss Scott. That's all she going to get from me. Hello? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Eduardo, when he's getting bad reception on his phone. <laughs> Are we okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. I... I'm wondering if there's any growth when it comes to runway because at least one, especially one of these looks, seems worse than anything she had. I'm in actually her gonna season. say it feels like she went back. Yeah, it feels like we've taken steps back. Oh, did y'all not know she had to do three design challenges for this ball? Oh, that makes more sense. Of course. Yeah. Well, if mm -hmm. she did, then that I if if these were all design challenges, then I would give her so much credit for one of these looks. If she just made that this episode. Oh, holy. Yes. <laughs> but if you brought it, nah. And now, sorry. Next. Next. Miranda Le Brau incredible concepts such a creative mind i love her so much how the fuck how, the how? Fuck? anyways what <laughs> yeah when when i so i'm gonna pull back the curtain a little bit i knew that River didn't want to join because they were kind of upset about some of the judging from this episode. Um, and so I initially figured, okay, Miranda must be in the bottom. But then I watched the episode and I'm like, oh, I get it. Miranda must not win. And that's yeah. why River is upset. Um, well, 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 Julie, this is. An incredible package of looks for me. Incredible. Yeah, I think both of her first two looks are really good. I think her third look is fine. Mm -hmm. Fine. I would have had her sol I would have had her solidly high safe. Yeah. Solidly high safe for me. I would have had her safe as like my fourth. Oh, she was 100 percent in my top three. If not third. I yeah. do love that for you. <laughs> I only have like one slight critique, but we will get to it later. Yes. Nelenia. Yeah, this second look was the one that they showed for like literally three seconds. Yeah. Three seconds. And, and I, I wanted to see more of it. Because this package is really good. It's one of my favorite packages that was brought uh, throughout like this episode. I think Nelenia did a really, really good job. And so I feel like we're just Skipping over Nelania yet again. God damn it. Anyways, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she easily could have been in the top three as well. Like, this was a very good week for her. I'm curious where she's going to land in my scores because I really, really do like these three looks. I really do. Um, the third look kind of falls probably towards the middle of the maid looks for me, but like everything looks really, really good. Yeah. 
Alyssa Edwards. The wallet paid, and it did it, it did the damn thing. It did the damn thing. But also, my girl pull, pulled off a good look. She made it. She made it, and she did it. A pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoever she paid for these first two looks, like, money well spent. Uh I'll just say it like I think those first two looks might have been my favorite looks of the night. Um, as far as the third look goes, she was really coming for me. She knows how I feel about nudes and flesh tones, but I kind of like it. <laughs> that for in that first look, I can't get over the fact that with this bang, she looks like Violet Chachki. <laughs> I see it. Like she looks like Violet Chachki in the first look. She looks like Bosco in the second look. And she looks like Alyssa Edwards in the third look. So, hey, I'll take it. Yeah, Alyssa did really well. Yes. Wasn't she the white swan in that? Um, in no, the... she was the black swan. She was. Oh, she was? Swan. Okay. okay. That's why it's so significant. Right. Yeah, it's yep. a callback. Come on, callback. <laughs> Next up, Vanity Vin. This is fine. This is fine. Her third look, though, I think it was better. Um. Yes. She, well, she really went with all black. I didn't. I didn't she even did. realize that until I see them all together. Um. I will say I really like one of these looks. I really don't care for one of these looks and one of them falls right in the middle so she's kind of all over the board for me i'm curious if she's gonna end up in my top three because i actually really like this overall package mm-hmm. i think all three of these looks are really well done and vanity is really shutting me up like i've become a vanity vein stan i'll say that because i really do like what she's giving So I'd amuse. I see where she was going with it. I I see the vision. It was just wasn't executed properly. So it just fell short for me. Yeah, I'm kind of in a similar boat with her um, as I was with Eva, except to a more extreme degree where I really like so many of her looks in those first two episodes. And then this package just kind of let me down, like especially those first two looks. But for me, like for me, I don't know why, but I like the look she made better than the first two looks. (laughs) I just think in a ball where so many people did really well, this did kind of just miss the mark, unfortunately. But I think I like a lot about these looks. I'll say that much. Galavaro. She's my girl. She's my queen. She can do no wrong in my eyes. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I. this is another one I'm pretty mixed on. Um, one I really like. One is okay. And then one I'm not crazy about. Uh, in that in- order. <laughs> maybe we'll see uh, but uh, yeah I, she's another one like her looks were so amazing in those first two episodes so I was like this is her challenge and it wasn't for me like sadly for me quite literally it's a look I really like a look I'm kind of mixed on and a look I didn't care for mm-hmm. so that's very fair that's very fair but I'm biased. So. I, I, honestly th- I honestly think that first look is one of my favorite looks of the night. Mm. Honestly. Oh, I really like the first We'll talk fully. about it, but I, yeah. And last up, uh, Tessie T. Her first two looks are incredible. Her last look needed better execution. Uh, I kind of like all three. <laughs> like, uh, sure, like once they were kind of nitpicking that last look, I could see it. 
but I like it. Like as she was walking down the the stage, it worked for me. So I thought it was a pretty good night for Tessa. Yeah. That's my girl. <laughs> Wearing pink in a design challenge is always going to work mm -hmm. for Tessa Testicle. Yes. I love it. It's so good. So good. For me, she was probably number two. That's very fair. I have to look and at I my am, score. I am really mildly think. biased, but... I really liked what she presented. And I thought it was... Oh, she understood the assignment, for sure. Oh, yes. We will get so, to it. But Yes. So we get our critiques. We get our tops and bottoms. I want to talk about our untucked moment before we get into the overall results. Because mm -hmm. we come back in... And the girls are not feeling Miss Tessie T in oh, her confidence man. era on Tessa Testicles Drag Race. Oh, they are not teaching her oh at all. Oh at all. And I'm so confused by it because like she brought two well, really good looks and her thick look was good. It was just I think the thing really is, I think the thing is there's so much going on that the other girls may not have seen just how good her first two looks were. That's the thing. We're seeing the runway presentation. They're not seeing the runway presentation. Yeah, that's true. So if you're basing it, if if we were basing this challenge solely off of the third look, I don't think she would have been in the top, personally. No. Probably not. But based on the the ball package overall, oh yeah, no, her, her spot in the top was very deserved. Mm -hmm. So... I think there also might be a factor and I don't want to, I don't want to make this sound like I'm judging them for thinking this way, mm -hmm. but I think there might be a factor in that this cast, they have in their mind. Oh yeah. We're all finalists. We're all finalists from our seasons. Plus Alyssa Edwards, who is like in this top tier, uh, like infamy <laughs> drag yes. queen. We know who's out first. We mm -hmm. know who was in the bottom four out of five episodes. Uh, she she's the only one of us that's not a finalist or a superstar, Alyssa Edwards. So yeah, we we just know the writings on the wall. Thank you for for casting somebody who will be first out for us because it's not going to be any of us. Yay us, we're all good. And I think it might just be a subconscious thing in all of their brains that they knew Tessa was twelve. Um, and I even mentioned it when we we had like the. Um, cast like we talked about the the rumored cast uh close to a year ago now and i mentioned oh i'm worried they cast tessa to go home like first or early yeah um and yeah it, it's just i think it's a just a natural human thought to be like okay yeah we we're safe over her and i think it's like maybe bleeding into their thoughts and their suppositions about how she's going to do and what she's showing and maybe they're judging her a little harsher than everybody else yeah I mean, she also didn't have a great talent show performance either so i do definitely true. understand that yeah and she's proving them wrong slay is she though <laughs> because i don't feel like any of them feel like whoa i was wrong i feel like they're all standing two down she's two toes going down. to prove them <laughs> okay. wrong well, she she was in the top, and they weren't. So, like, and that can just show to them what this judging is crazy. <laughs> like, people are, they're allowed to have those yeah. opinions too, because um, yeah. we definitely are thinking it after this episode. Not per not per se about Tessa, but uh, <laughs> like, I'm sure that a lot of them are like, yeah, that's lunacy if she was in the top. My other favorite part of this episode is when they cut to Athena, and she just like. Someone asked her who she thought should be in the bottom over her. And she's like, Tessa, I'm so sorry, girl. This look is shit. <laughs> and then you just get Tessa doing a full, like, the a full, like, pan to camera, a la The Office, just. She knows what she is there to do. <laughs> And I love her I so love fiercely for it. I love I her so this. fiercely for it. But um, let's talk about our results because mm -hmm. we have some. So our top three, despite what David maybe thought based <laughs> on the way that they called people, which was very strange. Yeah. And, the and way I do they agree it was very strange. 
Yeah, it was. It was, it was very strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the top three was Tessa, Pathia, and Alyssa. I think more specifically, the top two was Pathia and Alyssa. Yeah, that's um, more like. And I'm happy that they gave the win to Pathia. Ooh. Yay! Me too. Like, yeah. yeah, like it's it's kind of crazy. The top two are my top two people going into this season. Um, yeah. but yeah, I'm just very happy to see Pathia get her flowers because I was worried, like, especially with the edit she, she had been getting that maybe she's, she's just somebody who's going to go by the wayside and not get a very big edit. So I'm happy she got at least one win and hopefully more. Yeah. I think this was a really well-deserved win. I think she really showed who she is and what her drag is all about this episode. So I'm really glad that she's getting her flowers. very that um and we do get a bottom three for some reason it's these queens um athena miranda and soa and truthfully i think i only would i would have only put one of them there i agree Same. i agree and it was soa <laughs> yes and i love soa so fiercely but like yeah so because i I honestly think I would have put Kitty and Queen. That would have been mm. fair. Kitty, Queen, and Soa, I think, would probably would have been my bottom three. Yeah. And I haven't done my full score, so I honestly don't know what my scores yeah. say necessarily. I know Kitty but... for sure would have been in my bottom three. Yeah. Kitty I'm, for sure. I'm just going to say I would have had a bottom two because I don't like who is in my bottom three based on the scores I have so far. I may adjust things. Uh, but there's somebody's made look that I really didn't like it and weighing it twice as much uh, that put them in the bottom three for me based on my scores. Um, and I know somebody on this panel definitely wouldn't be happy with me. So, um, yep. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find you <laughs> and no. I'm going to tear you up. But <laughs> honestly, though, I get it. Because it wasn't her absolute strongest showing. Right. I'll say that. I know you're biased. Yeah. And I love biased. Gala too. I but love if, Gala too. If I take out her face, I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Valid. We'll like, go with that. the maid look, we will get to it, but yeah. There were some struggles there. So mm -hmm. I understand where you're coming from. And I, I think the problem Gala had that like most of the queens had at least one look that I really liked. And mm -hmm. Gala for me, there wasn't just one that I really, really latched on to. Like there was one I liked more than the others, but it wasn't enough to like bring up her score enough. So I still love Gala. I just was a little, little disappointed this episode. But yeah, I I do want to talk about um the critique that Athena got from RuPaul. Yes. because uh, I, I had heard about this critique before I actually watched the episode. Uh Shout out, Be Like Boy. <laughs> uh, but we got the critique about um, Athena, her look that she made, not feminizing her body. And this goes back to what I was saying last week about how Belgium drag is just a different thing. Like, the queens, for the most part, unless you're Chloe Clark, they don't pad. They use their natural bodies, and it works for them. And it's just such a cultural thing that, that sets them apart. And I, it makes them special. It makes them special from so many of these other franchises where it can become homogenous, especially English speaking franchises where, okay, you know what the expectation is for how people should pat. And I just re like, I really like the Belgium drag scene and I hate that she's being penalized for not fitting in a more palatable box that can appeal to Americans. Okay. Like that's what it is. Like, Oh, you're not fitting what I want as an American. So bad shame on you. Um, I, I really liked her made look and I like, it's kind of a travesty that that put her in the bottom. So that's my thoughts. No, I, I fully agree. I think, forcing drag to just be like female impersonation is just really closing the doors on what drag can be and really not allowing people to really show their full art when it comes to drag. 
And I feel like that critique is just such bullshit because there are so many ways to still be feminine and not have the body and have whatever. I feel like that kind of critique is just like very, just like closed minded and very like, we're in a different time now where like you don't have to fit into this like female impersonation box. And Athena just has a different type of drag. And so it felt like they were telling her that her drag isn't as valid as someone like Alyssa Edwards. And it just, I really, it really, really irked me because I really like Athena's like drag style, and like what she brings to the table. And she's unique. She brings something different and Belgian drag is different. So we cannot be judging other types of drag as if they were American drag. It's just not fair for the girls. And it's just forcing girls to change who they are and what their drag is so that they fit your mold of what you think drag is and what drag should be for you. And so I think that critique for Athena was absolute bullshit. Not it. Yeah. I'm not surprised that this is where we've ended up. I'm really not, unfortunately. Um, and that's all I have to say about it, because I do love Athena. But we end up with Soa and Athena in the bottom two, lip syncing to Bad Idea Right by Olivia Rodrigo. This song was to be honest. I thought Athena won this lip sync. Mm -hmm. I do. I didn't know how to feel about it. Soa dropped some words yeah. several times. Yeah, I was going to say. And I love, and I love Soa. Let me yeah. make this clear. I love Soa and I love the way that Soa lip syncs and I love the way that Soa performs. This is not a song I ever would have expected either of them to perform. Mm -hmm. I'll say that also. For me, I always go off of the person that I think embodies this song the best. And in this case, for me, I think it was Athena. That's very fair. Um, I was not sure how to feel about this lip sync because I felt like so I had really, really good charisma on stage. She has such incredible charisma when she performs, but she dropped a lot of words. Like it felt like she just didn't know any of the song and she just was trying to get through it. I think I knew more of the words, but she definitely didn't have as much charisma as so I had. So it was really kind of difficult for me to really be sure, like to say who would win it because like, yeah, so I dropped a lot of words, but she had really good stage presence and really good charisma on the stage. So I didn't know how to feel about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I honestly didn't notice the dropped words personally. Um, but energy wise, I was, I was more into what Soa was doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe that's biased because Soa is one of my favorites in this cast and I'm not ready to lose her. Like it, it sucks to lose Athena, but like, so I just know she has so much potential. I am starting to get worried that her English may not be where it needs to be to, mm -hmm. to be really successful in some of these challenges. Cause you can tell like you can easily kind of even rank these girls based on how fluent they are with English. And so is near the bottom. Um, I, I think Gala is near the bottom as well. And it would just really kind of suck to see like a lot of the Queens that it's not their first language uh, just really suffer because like, we're, we're going to have acting challenges coming mm -hmm. up. We're going to have snatch game coming up and they're probably not going to be as quick on their feet and they're probably going to suffer for it. So I'm very worried, but you got people also like vanity, like she's so fluent. You have people like Tessa so fluent in English and it, I'm just so nervous for my girls that aren't quite at that level. So well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. Nalenia is another one that's down there. Like her English just isn't quite there. And 
this is why it's going to be heartbreaking watching global. I just know it. I just know it. Yeah, I've, I've had that fear since the very beginning of the season. I brought it up many a times, and I will keep bringing it up. I think the girls that are not super fluent in English are immediately at a disadvantage, and so I'm always rooting for them, and I always want them to do well because I just know that they're going to get absolutely disrespected when it comes to like a comedy challenge or an acting challenge. And so I just want these girls that are not super great at English to really prove them wrong. And if not possible, to at least have a moment in the spotlight to be like, you are such a great queen, despite the fact that you are not good at English, because it would feel very weird to just critique someone on, oh, you just didn't know your words on the acting challenge because it's not your first, whatever. It's a critique that I've always had, and I'm super worried about it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. <sighs> well, unfortunately, I am, I'm, I'm sad that we've lost Athena here. I really I'm am. So I, upset. I'm... Yeah, I just wish there was more. I wish there was more non-elimination episodes, to be honest. And I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I, do, I don't know. Three episodes just doesn't feel like enough for me. Like, no. Maybe, maybe the fourth episode would be a great time to start eliminating queens. But I don't know. I'm just not ready. There was a there was a rumored format that it was six episodes originally. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would have I would have liked that. I would have liked that too. Yeah, I would have been okay with it. But I'm so upset. I am yes. so upset. Especially with the critiques that Athena got. It felt like they were just kicking her while she was down. And if Athena is watching, girl, we love you and your drag is valid. Oh, yeah. And like the critiques that you got absolutely don't mean anything to like the level of drag that you bring. So like Athena is such an incredible drag artist that I feel like her going home first is such a like is such a loss for the show. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I just like we love Belgian drag here so much that like there's a, there's a little bit of bias. I have to be 100% honest. But with that being said, I just feel like exactly what you said, we're missing out on such a beautiful culture of drag by losing Athena here. Mm -hmm. It's one and of the it's... more unique drag cultures, I would say, out of all the Drag Race franchises, honestly. It's one of my favorites, honestly, in, in all of the Drag Race that we've seen. It's one of my absolute favorites. So yeah. Yeah. It's just so different. Uh, and I think because of that, that's why Rue just didn't get it. It's so different that Rue just couldn't fit it in her mind that this is what Belgian drag is. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's why it just wasn't fair. Whatever. I could keep going for hours about how Same. how unfair and how mad I am that Athena got eliminated this episode. Yeah. And we wow. didn't even go into how like frustrating it is having Miranda in the bottom three. Like I cannot get over that. I could go on for hours. <laughs> I'm worried. Yes. I'm worried. I'm I worried. worried as well. it's, we'll talk about next week's challenge too, but I'm worried. But mm -hmm. let's talk about our draft. More fun things like drafting. Mm. Ooh, how fun. I'm in last. Well. Hey, it's a nice contrast from where we have been, so I'll take it. Um, I very proudly had Athena on my team. Um, and now I don't anymore. And it makes me sad. Uh, but I'm currently sitting at 18 points. Uh, River is currently in fourth with 19 points. And we have a three-way tie for the win currently between Eduardo and two other people that have not been on the podcast to talk about this season yet. Well, that means I'm winning. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I'll, so, I'm just counting the people that show up for the podcast for now. I'm sorry, Robbie. Uh, so... For now, I'm winning. Correct. 
And next week we do find out that it is a girl group challenge. And, and <laughs> they I, fucking showed the tops and bottoms. They literally showed the They bottom. literally showed it. Literally showed it. Don't even have to watch the episode. I already know who's in the top and who's in the bottom. What the fuck? I mean, not necessarily. I didn't see this, first of all. There but, are literally six people on stage. Okay, and oh. could it not be like, you're the winning team. Congrats. Go backstage. No, no. because there's also girls in the back later on. Like, hmm. no. <laughs> I wish, but no. <laughs> the editing of this season is wild. And I am not a fan so far. The first two episodes were so good, and this is just a, a rapid decline, and I'm terrified for what's to, to come next. It's looking rough. I'm so, I'm so, ugh, just, because I already feel like I know who's going home next week, and I'm not going to say too. it, but it, if you saw who the tops and bottoms are, then I'm pretty confident I know who's going home next week. I know, I, I think so too. I have no idea because <laughs> I didn't pay attention. Live in your ignorant bliss. David. Yeah, please. I wish I could. Don't look for it. It will be better. I won't because I don't like spoilers. If I can avoid them, don't want to know them at all. Yeah, yeah that's why I was but, so upset when they showed it. But... Oh, that is that. Uh, we're going to go talk about some looks over on look over here but thank you for joining us for this recap episode of uh global all-stars we will be back to talk about episode four next week uh so make sure to subscribe like and share on your way out check the description below where you can find all of our audio podcast links our other youtube channels our patreon our social media links and where you can get your merch including but not limited to cut mug david you are the only one one with one currently so uh <laughs> Um, and with that being said, we're going to get out of here. So, uh, cheers. 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 Oh, goodness. Oh, we this forgot to episode. do the different languages. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yep. I fully did. Um, I fully did. Oops. Um, you um, forgot to do it, David Healy, but I did not forget. Oopsie. I only... <laughs>